Hi. So um, here we are. We are recording to do oracles of colonization. Um, a, perhaps another time we'll figure out a more evened up split screen. And um, oh, so, but that's okay because uh, we have Emma Cardinal Bastier from Cardinal Creations and um, they are the uh, person I'm bringing on here to talk. So you'll end up being the main part of the video, but the cards we're discussing, you know, it will actually work out well because as I hold up the cards up to the screen, that will work out pretty well. Um, so uh, I created the Lambac Tarot and Oracle of Colonization which is a 78 card tarot deck, and it will be on Kickstarter soon. And a 23 card Oracle deck that's also Shadow Arcana. And so in these conversations called Oracles of Colonization, we're gonna discuss these cards and how they relate to our lives. Um, and so that you understand where our words are coming from, I'm gonna really briefly tell you who I am and Emma um, can do the same. Um, I'm Auntie Kay or Krista Demore Flute and I'm a Lakota and Cajun scoop survivor who is scooped um, to Southeastern Ontario. And I live in um, Algonquin territories, which is one of my children's territories. And so that's where my experience and comes from with a whole lot of history in between there. Emma? I'm Emma Cardinal Bast. I'm Metis Cree from Alberta, although I currently live in Ontario. Um, I am a scoop survivor myself and have faced the CAS system with my own children and the trauma that comes with that. Um, yeah, that's me. All right. So we were discussing. And this is something I'll be offering other people that I do this conversation with. Um, should we shuffle a card or um, talk about a specific card? And um, we were talking about shuffling and choosing which of these cards um, and letting you know life choose which of these cards would come out when our discussion veered to a specific topic in our indigenous communities today. And um, Emma chose to talk about that we would talk about um, 16 internalized and 17 lateral. And I'm going to read um, what I wrote for each of those cards. And then we're going to start off the discussion with these two. Um, so for internalized, um, it says internalized believed. If they tried hard enough, they'd succeed. Yet no matter how well they did, they were still judge, judged as inferior by birth. So they took the only road colonization offered to success. Eventually internalized war with pride. The system isn't truly supporting you. And card 17, lateral. Lateral is dating internalized and they watch the news a lot. Lateral wishes other BIPOC folks understood how much trouble they were causing for lateral. Lateral blames those most like themselves, leave these shadows of the system for hope. So, <laughs> these are our cards today and we are going to dive right in deep as to how they affect our lives, um, how they've affected our lives in various ways, um, how we're feeling it today. Oh, well, yeah. The, these are the cards that came up just because these are things that we deal with in our communities internalized racism and like colonialist ideals, which we then in turn utilize in our lives and end up creating incredible lateral violence. And you put the nail on the head with how being successful in a colonizer's 
world and doing things according to you know colonizing stand, colonizer standards it's we don't often sit and we're not called to think about how are we imparting lateral violence and how are we harming our communities with doing that through our own internalized ideas of success so yeah yeah and um it's really easy to think of you know that internalized racism in the work we do if that work is like tribal police um you know indigenous child and family services um positions like this it's really really easy um to see how that striving for success has become like internalized racism and the lateral violences it's going to create but it's also possible in um in jobs and professions um where we aren't expecting um where we don't look for it as much mm -hmm. where we don't look for that internalized racism as much um because you know we have to survive in this capitalistic world but there's lines we have to draw between um when are we surviving under capitalism and when are we um succeeding at it and climbing on the backs of our own to do so and yeah and not even climbing on the backs of people intentionally but even just not being aware of the fact that there are people with very different walks and who come from de very different places and who don't necessarily have the same connections to culture and tradition and things like that and so we're left watching all these people who are successful and what they're doing mm -hmm. and you know like for some people those are those are like the faces and names that they know on their own like journeys they don't have community and culture and family to to guide them they they have the artists the you know the the people who are su supporting us right like that's who they have and so we don't often sit here thinking what is internalized racism what is lateral violence because in so many ways we're not we're not conditioned to think that way yeah. before we and especially when you're achieving your success in a colonized system or in a way that appeals to settlers as well right like it's it, it's 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 this crossing of lines like okay well i'm doing this thing and it's you know supposedly benefiting community but i'm not thinking about others in my community that i'm hurting through this and I think that's where you said it more accurately. I'm not thinking about others because I mean, we are we are all aware. It's hard to be an indigenous person and not be aware that, you know, the majority of us sit on one side of colonialism's ladder and a few of us sit on some of the other rungs. Um, it's just really hard, I think. <laughs> it's hard. To talk and look about it because we really have to look at ourselves in ways that hurt and then yeah. i think we get confused about okay so our what, what side of this is lateral violence um and that came up today there uh, <laughs> there is an indigenous artist who has collaborated with a beer company and um there's a lot of hurt feelings about it and um there's a lot of comments on their post about it and i actually think the majority of the comments are really respectful i think our community for the most part expressed their hurt their disappointments and their trauma in really respectful ways and yet they were the ones accused of lateral violence yeah um as opposed to seeing the impacts of internalized racism and success creating the lateral violence um those who called it out um even really nicely and really kindly 
um, were the ones accused of lateral violence. So, like, I find that often, especially like, I don't know if I have really, I don't want to say high standards or expectations of people who are up on pedestals. But at the same time, you are a huge voice and a huge face. And so I think that when our community comes together and says, you're, you're hurting people, like this causes harm and you need to be aware of this. This isn't lateral violence. This is, this is us, our communities doing what we, we've always done, what we should be doing. And that is taking our own and calling them in and saying, you are causing harm and this needs to be addressed as a community. And these conversations so often, like they happen off of public places because it's exactly that. Like there's people who are really just want everything to be love and light and beautiful artwork, which I mean, I love her artwork. It's, it's so empowering and beautiful artwork. And so to see it on a beer can, just like, I'm just sitting here going, no. And then and, the images of smudging beer, and, like, I'm like, no. It hurt, it hurt a lot. And like, their images are largely medicinal images like the one on the beer can mm -hmm. or they're ones of us taking back our sexuality i can't think of any of their art all of which has been so empowering for so many people um that would actually not make me cringe to have it on a beer can because one it's harmed so many of us, so many of us are still harmed by it. Um, one of the most difficult parts for those of our siblings struggling with alcoholism is that it's socially acceptable. And so it's harder to say no. And like this just made it like so socially acceptable for indigenous people. I, I hope not, but you know, it, it puts it out there we're so frequently harmed by settlers who drink mm -hmm. drunk settlers are dangerous they're so dangerous and to tie it in to our stolen sisters is no like that's it's what they're guzzling insult. when they do that to us that's what they're guzzling when they do it to us it's it's an insult like it's I, I don't know how else to say that. Like, do, do I think that, yeah, it's, there, there's just things on, in the comments of that post that just to see them coming from our own people and to see that level of disconnect from the harm that our communities are facing yeah. is really like, it's it's heartbreaking in a way because like we need we need to be more supportive but we're just increasing the stigmatization and it's like i said like i mean this is just giving white people a can of superiority it is and it's like, really hard because we're both right? artists who are not big but like there's a struggle between wanting to see our people not struggle and um, the impacts of success on us, which are not positive for the whole community so often. It's, it's hard as an artist and like, you know, I, I feel this really, really deeply. And I look at especially like really like bigger known beaters who charge an exorbitant amount for beadwork. And I'm just sitting there kind of going, I know how much beads cost. I pay myself far more than is minimum wage, almost double minimum wage. I still could not justify charging $300 for a pair of beards. At any point, no matter how many people want my beadwork, no matter how quickly I sell out, I, I'm never going, like, I, I hope I never milk that system to get the most money that I can possibly just because people want my stuff. 
because it just feels like you know you're leaving people out the marginalized people the people on the fringes you can't afford 300 dollars for a pair of earrings right yeah like, there's all of this and everybody i'm struggling to price my deck right now because it is an indie deck it does have 101 cards but if i can't afford to buy a deck myself on my welfare check <laughs> I'm going to feel like crap. Um, and, um, you know, but we know I used to make ribbon skirts and they were expensive. And, um, you know, I will always on occasion make ribbon skirts, but I, I knew I didn't want um, to make them full time. And then when COVID hit, I was like, I don't want to make them right now. Um, I'd be interested in making plainer ribbon skirts for people who just need a skirt. Um, but I also don't currently have the capabilities to do that in an affordable way, other than when you know people bring me stuff and we're not bringing each other stuff. It's, it's a hard call. Every time along the line, it's a hard call. Um, when I've made regalia, pricing is a hard call um and it should be actually it should be uncomfortable for us i think we're not supposed to charge money like i have a hard time placing a monetary value on my beadwork and like being able to set my prices as i fucking want to like i've had a freedom in that i can charge what i want yeah. And, you know, so there's this whole thing now with having a shop where it has to be more uniformly thought out and I can't just sit there and go, oh, hey, yeah, I, I know you've got a welfare check. So this is the price that I'm going to give because I can't, yeah. <laughs> that's how I can share like my medicine with this, like beadwork is medicine. It's medicine for me. It's medicine for other people. And at the point where it stops becoming that and where a price tag is put on that medicine that becomes unaffordable for other people who cannot, that's when I have that serious, like it's an internal. And so where, where how, like that's what that fine line that we're talking about with these cards here with like that internalized, we have to be successful. We have bills to pay, right? Like, you know, and we're putting so much of ourselves into this and we do need to have, you know, a roof on our head and food and we need to have, we do more than survive. Like, so we're, we're like, you know, we have to find those fine lines. But one thing that I learned from some very wise people a number of years ago was that, you know, when someone says, hey, this causes harm, that's when I stop what I'm doing and I go, oh, okay, I need, I need to take a step back and I need to rethink this. And this yeah. has happened over and over and over again in my own journey through overcoming lack of community and lack of culture in my own life and drawing these things back into my life and making sure that I'm doing it in a way that doesn't hurt other people. Oh yeah, right? in, <laughs> as a scoop survivor in my first 10 years uh, coming, returning to community, like I made mistakes all over the place. Um, but I think, you know, today, what's really hard and I realize I have to do is we have to look for these in ourselves like all the time and in our choices. We yep. really have to keep looking for them. Um, where am I internalizing this? Where am I acting practice. colonized? Where am I being hurtful? It has to be a daily practice. It really does. It really does. Yeah. Uh, do you want to talk uh, about how they relate to the major arcana? Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so. Internalize is the shadow card for the tower. Ah, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Let me read the tower and again. I actually just got the tower yesterday in one of my readings. 
The tower bodes upheaval, moments where you are shaken to your very core and you can feel your foundations crushing beneath you. You may wonder who you have become. That which you have built to protect yourself may be the very thing that ultimately crushes you. In the broadest sense, a revolt has occurred and old institutions can no longer stand. And then the reverse of that one, this is just from my book. If you want to read from um, what you actually which, have. Which book are you card. reading from? I'm reading it's from um, ah, Star, Spinner. Star Spinner. Yeah, it's, it's my favorite resource. The reverse, it's a good guidebook. It is. Uh, the reverse is what I got yesterday. The walls you have built remain strong, but you never leave them. In an effort to hide from the wind and cold, you also have to shut away the sun and stars. You resist change because it may entail starting over. To your mind, a fresh start is more of a threat than a new opportunity. When we're dealing with our internalized shit, all of that, like, you know, you're, you're shook into your core. Yeah, you are. And I think a lot of it is like, that the complexity of it is we need this tower to fall because it's slowly killing us. Um, it's on a pretty good trajectory. There's not very many of us left actually. Um, but we also know like we're going to be hurt in its fall. It's a process, right? Like, I mean, and I think In regards to what's happened today, Chief Lady Bird's response was very respectful in that mm -hmm. they heard what was being said and were you know, taking it into account. It's a little bit too late because the damage and the harm has been done already. But at the same time, there's foundations that are, are crumbling. And this, this conversation is far from over. Like this yeah. just came up yesterday. Like, you know, and even for me, like th that's why I, I messaged you about it first. I was like, Chris, did you see this? Like I needed to talk to someone else because I saw these images and it crushed me to my core. But at the same time, I wanted to make sure that I was coming from a space of not being defensive of my own hurt and really thinking about a broader picture. It was personal for both of us on different levels. Like yeah. for me, it hurt personally um, because having, you know, just lost my sister um, to murder, you know, um, extraction, alcohol, drugs. That's, that, those are the tools that settlers use um, when they're murdering our, our siblings. And I don't know if you want to talk about how it hurt you, but yeah, it was personal for both of us. The hurts were personal for both of us. Yeah. Um, oh, that's loaded. Like I, I grew up disconnected from culture, mostly because of alcohol abuse. And as much as I hate the fact that I was scooped, um yeah like my mom was trying to protect me from something that she saw as being harmful and so I had this really twisted kind of you know mentality in my mind but I grew up without culture and it to, to me to see those pictures of that beer being smudged <laughs> and I'm thinking about all of all, all of indigenous children out there who have been taken away from that culture and that sense of belonging. And, you know, like, I mean, I was, I, I was drunk before I ever smelt burning sweetgrass. Like I had that memory first and then I got that connection to culture. And so it hurts because this, our kids need this. And I'm so blessed to be able to give my children this, especially having faced apprehension. And it, to, to see this just going on a beer bottle, and like I said, giving, them a can of superiority it's just you know I, I've been fighting against white superiority for so long and its impacts on my life and it just today it just you know it was one of those things that just made me feel like what the fuck <laughs> you know yeah. like we try so hard to be so strong 
and we do and we are and that you know like coming out and sharing parts of that and saying no this hurts and this is why is it takes courage because you know mm. that people are going to come against you and they're going to you can't hurt people like that how do you think your mom feels hearing you talk about her like that like all of this yeah. kind of stuff and I'm like in some senses I have to be true to myself and not necessarily consider the hurt feelings of my oppressors but I can't go around with that kind of entitlement of it doesn't matter what I do I've been in that space before like I mean when I you know like I said like or sorry like you said with coming out and going oh gosh sorry my brain is totally blank space making mistakes <laughs> like when I when I first made the decision essentially where I was like I, I I'm not going to live under white people's rules over me anymore mm -hmm. I made mistakes that harmed people in my community and I was mm -hmm. told that they harmed people and I have now since gone forward with more intention of making sure that I am not hurting people because I know what all of that process is like and I like yeah like when the tower comes crumbling down we're all we, our communities are there yeah we're under it yeah we're under it and yet we our only hope of survival is it coming down <laughs> And so then we move on to um, so lateral is a shadow to um, the shooting star. And um, he chose this because in the shooting star, we have the towers of colonialism burning in the distance. Um, but like you have to leave the shadows of the tower to find hope. And, you know, in lateral, we have to leave the shadows of those systems in order to find hope um, and hope in each other and hope in our own systems and hope in our own ways and hope in our own cultures instead of, you know, this um, striving to be accepted, um, you know, by the other, by cultures of whiteness. Yeah. That's true, we gotta get out of there. I like yeah. that the, the shooting star makes so much sense for that. And I'm just reminded like, you know how you can't see the stars as brightly in the city and then as soon as you escape all that light pollution, you can see them. Mm -hmm. Like that's walking away from that tower, walking away from those institutions where lateral violence abound. Mm -hmm. You're not gonna see, um, in the tower it says something about seeing love or seeing the light. In an effort to hide from the wind and cold, you have also shut away the stars and the sun. And then like, if you wanna rephrase that, in an effort to succeed in a colonialized world, you've shut out everything else that our spirits need right like that at the sunshine light mm -hmm. and ceremony like there's getting back to the previous discussion there's so many children and so many adults who have gone through life without having ceremony and without having that access to that soul cleansing experience being guided by someone who has your spiritual interests best at heart, mm -hmm. right? Like that, that's, that's an important part. And we're not gonna get that until we walk away from those crumbling towers and do we're it not. on our own terms. Like, and yet we try to put <laughs> culture into those towers. Our communities have had a few decades of indigenous culture being offered to various social services. And you know, the thing about writing information down and putting it in books 
is you condense that information. You decide what fits in the book. Or in the case of culture via indigenous social services, uh, how much information fits on a computer printout of a medicine wheel. <laughs> um, and then, you know, your next week you get another printout and another lesson. And we've had a couple of decades of indigenous people learning in this condensed. <sighs> yeah. And like how much culture have we lost in the last few decades by trying to provide our culture through social services? How much culture have we lost because our people don't understand that they only have a page of this teaching and a page of that teaching and a page of that teaching? And, you know, in those systems, there's still white people giving those teachings. And yeah, there is, but it, there's also Native people doing it too. There's a whole you know, new generation of professional natives doing it. And I think this is also, as I'm saying it, this is also a lateral violence by, you know, stripping down your culture, our culture to hand it down to a sibling who doesn't have better access than the bare minimum we're going to provide in an hour or two hour session on a computer printout. Yep. And, you know, um, I came back to community, I'm older than you, um, and I came back to community um, sort of as this was changing, right? As this was occurring and becoming bigger and more predominant. <laughs> yeah. See, and like, for me, a lot of that kind of stuff, like that's how I've received a lot of what I've got, right? Like prenatal class every two weeks. It was amazing and it was great because I'd never had anything like this, but still the atmosphere and the confines of which that information is happening is still incredibly colonialist. Yeah. And it's just, it's, it's hard. And I see this in the birth world too. Like I know indigenous midwives and indigenous doulas all over Turtle Island and especially here in Ontario as well. And I used to be one. I'm responsible yeah. for some of those prenatal handouts <laughs> that I'm complaining about. I'm responsible it's, for many of the handouts I'm complaining about. <laughs> yeah, it, but at the same time, like, I don't know, like we have to find these balances of how, how are we doing this and how are we ensuring this? Because that can't be all that people have. It just, it can't. They have, like, we have to have more connections and more access to things. Mm -hmm. other than just what is scheduled at a time at a health center yeah kind of deal. we talked about what card in the minor arcana this made us think of and it just occurred to me what card it made me think of so did you pick one out that it made you think of i didn't okay do you want to flip through your deck and see what comes to mind and we'll see what we each get and this is a conversation as a whole and for folks watching we've had various roles in this conversation we're having um you know i spent my mid-20s to mid-30s creating a type of community i'd happily take back as much as I gained so much from it, I uh, regret so much of it um, now that I know what I know <laughs> in my middle ages here. All right, what's your card? Knight of Swords. It popped out right away. I got four drums. Yeah. That that card is really up to what we're discussing here though. Like that's that's selling ceremony and selling 
medicines. Yeah. Yeah. That, um, yeah. What do you have written for the four of drums? Okay, it's gonna take a, or it won't be too bad of scrolling because it's C. And I am going to say that also uh, this is not the final copy, um, but it's probably pretty close or um, it's probably pretty close. Uh, here we are. Okay, if you never take the, time if you never take time to sit and feel the heartbeat understand what you already have you will forget why you made the drums in the first place instead filling your pockets regardless of consequences take stock of what you already have before you lose what's most important reverse you've been irresponsible with what you have That makes a lot of sense. So I but you the chose of, the nine of swords or the knight of swords. The knight of swords. The knight of swords. Knight of swords is a proactive and curious individual. He is opinionated, but also a clear and intentional communicator. Though inflexible in your arguments, unless provided with new information, you value the truth over your pride. You check your sources and interrogate your findings with consistency. Which I'm reading that is like, I mean, how do you go against lateral violence? You do exactly that. You look at your sources, you go and you talk to people and, you know, you have discussions and, you know, find, find and you truth. realize the discussions themselves aren't lateral violence. Now, Chief Lady Bird didn't call the discussions lateral violence. Some of our other community members did. Yeah. Um, but we've also seen this problem before, um, you know, there was a Skoden artist and it took months for Chief Ladybird and other artists to um, get on board with that Me Too campaign because it's really hard to say, hey, sibling, <laughs> you're wrong. <laughs> you're, you know, causing lateral violence. This is, yeah, this is internalized racism. Um, it's hard to say that. It's really hard to say that. And I think part of why it's hard to say is because we, although we need to point it out and color people in in these times, we can't do it without being hypocritical. We are all colonized to some degree. Oh yeah. Yeah, and that makes it even harder because then you're like, oh shit. <laughs> Well, and that was, that was like part of my struggle too, was like, I mean, I had my initial gut reaction, but I had to sit and process and unpack where I was coming from myself. Yeah. And, you know, you have to find other people to do that with too. You can't do that just on your own. Mm -hmm. And so oftentimes our opinions and such are formed without community input. Yeah. And with the individualistic mindset. Well, one commenter pointed out, you know, how come, you know, missing emergent indigenous women groups and their families weren't contacted exactly. to see how they felt about this? Of if anyone, if anyone, especially when you're going to pretend it's about that problem. Yeah. You need to you, you need to do some consultation and like work around this because I remember back when I think it was for Canada 150 when that winery released that wine label bottle that had all of that indigenous imagery and they were like oh well it's like Canadian images and I'm like okay first off you're using <laughs> indigenous imagery and just passing it off as like blanket Canadian that is racist mm, no, you yeah. did not consult with you know the indigenous and indigenous artist or like the indigenous art community before you decided to throw our symbols on your wine bottle number three and 
connections between alcoholism and indigenous communities and you're gonna just go and take our symbols and throw them on your wine bottles and we were pissed. Off of the 150 genocide celebration and we were all we were pissed. pissed we were all pissed like, and then yeah and then when that same violence is we have created again yeah and we all called it violence and mm -hmm. when it's created again by our own it's yeah they, they it's found internalized the and lateral. They needed to find an indigenous artists to be able to, you know, agree to putting their 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 label on that. Like, I mean, how many artists did they actually? I want to know if they actually consulted other artists or if she was the first or just the first that said yes. I'm curious. The first that said yes. I'm curious. Like, I just I have questions. Yeah, and like, that's the thing we are so often used it happens to us it happens to black people probably happens to all people of color us you know individually one by one support this thing friend support this thing friend or so you become you know, the one token native who supports that thing yeah and or, then it's like oh well my, my my native friend says this is okay yeah yeah and that's a, that's a problem and that is it's a problem especially from white people it's something else when you're the native who comes in and says, I'm native and I'm not offended. <laughs> like those, like those indigenous consultation companies. I'm a consultant. I will rubber stamp this for you and tell you it's okay, but it's not because then the whole community and indigenous people know how to rise up online and take down a company. Oh yeah, we've been doing it. <laughs> we've done it, we've done it. <laughs> We've done it, but God damn, it will hurt to do this time. Yeah. It's going to hurt to do this time. That's the thing. It hurts to bring these down. It hurts. It hurts. All right. Um, I'm going to wrap this up because I think we're pretty long and it has been super wonderful. It and has. it has. Um, and I'm looking forward to doing um more of these conversations i was like oh i hope we have enough to talk about <laughs> well i knew um, you had the, I, I knew you had cards in the oracle that had to do with this and that's what's been on my mind today so when you're yeah. we talking about like what should we do i'm like let's talk like, yeah let's talk about those cards because yeah. i think it's it's pertinent it is it is pertinent it is and the lesson is you know as much as it hurts um we need to bring it down um you know so much of it all of it um and have hope that enough of us survive bringing it down yep yeah because you know yeah you have to take those risks to end genocide. You do. All right. All right. I am going to figure out how to retrieve this recording and I will upload it um, to YouTube at the very least. And if I figure out how to upload to IG, I will. See you later. Bye. Bye. See you. See you later.